Well, uh, let's cross over now to Benghazi. Of course, Benz uh, Benghazi is the headquarters of the National Transitional Council, where the rebels are getting their orders. And of course, the Transitional Council dealing with the international community. Let's cross over now to Jackie Rowland, who's there for us. Uh, Jackie, of course, as you've most probably seen and heard, uh, the compound where Muammar Gaddafi has been certainly uh, taken over now by rebel fighters. Uh, how's that uh, going down where you are? Well, each time so that there are significant developments from Tripoli, we do see reactions, very swift reactions here in Benghazi as the news travels. Of course, the key night there was on Sunday when the rebels first entered Tripoli. But again, when news came through that opposition fighters had got into the uh, Bab Azizia compound um, and that they were basically running all over and those the very iconic shots of them attacking that statue of the hands and the plane, um, people here began to celebrate we had cars driving around the town, hooting their horns, people letting a big uh, revolutionary flag slap out of the windows of the cars, uh, gunfire, also explosives being thrown into the sea, which has this quite a dramatic effect, these really deep booms that we hear all the way along the Corniche here. But yet indeed, um, people here celebrating it as another significant step um, in what they hope will soon be a complete opposition victory in the capital. And we had a, a member of the uh, National Transitional Council in studio with me, Jackie, and he was saying that, you know, we are in control of the situation. We do know what we're doing. The forces that are in Tripoli are under our control, though perhaps with some of the images that we've seen, you wouldn't think so. Uh, the NTC do have a void that needs to be filled, does it not? How much pressure do you think they are under to try and, uh, if we coin a phrase, get their act together? Well, they are, in fact, um, doing um, their best to present themselves as being in control and in touch at a time, obviously, when those claims have been undermined uh, by events of the previous night, so 24 hours ago, when Saif al-Islam of Gaddafi, the prominent son of Mohammed the Muammar Gaddafi, who supposedly was in custody, suddenly appears on the streets of Tripoli, riding around in an open uh, top car with green flags flying and ecstatic supporters greeting him. That really has dealt a major credibility blow to the NCC and, if you like, has made these questions about um, how much in control the NCC is when events are taking place a thousand kilometres away, um, how much authority and respect the NCC can command um, since it's not actually in situ in the capital of Libya. All of these questions, if you like, come into sharper focus because of this particular fiasco where you have the NTC making these claims, actually going as far as to start negotiations with the International Criminal Court about essentially inviting Saito as last, and then it turns out he's escaped, or worse still, has been able to secure his release through some kind of financial transaction. So, yes, there are questions about when the NTC will go to Tripoli. They've repeated time and again that Libya is one country, no question about splitting the country. Tripoli is the capital of a united Libya, uh, which really does raise the question of how soon and they're going to get there. Obviously, they have security concerns that the roads or the sea get in. Nevertheless, there is quite an urgent need for a political presence uh, by the NTC to, to be there, because otherwise there are going to be, uh, I think, increased um, uh, sniping, possibly, in a metaphorical sense, by rebel fighters who feel that the, um, the politicians in Benghazi are not really pulling their weight while they, the fighters, are risking their lives on the front line. Indeed, and, and the NTC is emboldened by the support that they're getting, and today it was the Turkish foreign minister who came to visit them, al along with statements from Bahrain, Oman and Nigeria, that they now recognise the NTC as the legitimate government of Libya. And this is important, obviously. International recognition is important because, um, obviously, through international recognition um, came the, the military assistance. And through international recognition also will come um, finances. Um, badly needed a liquidity now for the, for the opposition, for the NPC. And just today, um, on Tuesday, we heard from the Turkish foreign ministry that Turkey would be giving $300 million to the NPC. Um, also, the unfreezing of assets, bank accounts, land, uh, real estate, uh, which was the property of the Libyan, the previous Libyan authorities, not only in Turkey, obviously in the United States, United Kingdom, Switzerland, other countries, and that property now, those bank accounts being unfrozen. So obviously it is important 
But equally important, as I said again, is for the NPC to be seen um, by Libyans um, as a credible source of authority, which is sharing in the risk um, as well. Uh, it's a question of responsibility as well as power, not just enduring power and international um, recognition, but also sharing in the risks and sharing in the responsibilities. Obviously, at the moment, the greatest risk are there on the, the battle streets, really, of Tripoli. In terms of the NTC moving towards Tripoli, they're not. They're saying that they're not going to move it in in the not too distant uh, future, as such. But if, do they give any indication? Have they given any indication that uh, it'll be sooner rather than later? They didn't give any indication in time terms. Uh, you know, they, they made it clear that it wasn't going to happen in the coming days when uh, the TNC chairman uh, Mustafa Abdul Jalil spoke to reporters on Monday, which was a news conference the day before the meeting with the Turkish foreign minister. And when he was asked specifically about when he and the other NPC members would be going to Tripoli, he made it clear that it wasn't going to happen in the coming days because they would need to be satisfied that opposition fighters had captured the whole of the, of the capital, had managed to route the Iraqi forces, and in fact that security had been established in the city before they were removed. Now, that obviously isn't going to happen overnight, and so there is a really a question now of um, at what stage they will go in, um, what level of security will they feel is adequate for them to move, and, you know, where might they go to themselves? Might there be some kind of, um, maybe a kind of like a, an advanced guard that might go out there, or might they establish a presence um, somewhere nearby? I mean, all these questions are not quite clear, but um, I think that the NPC as well is aware that people would be expecting them uh, sooner rather than later if they wish to really not only be recognised by the international community as the legitimate authorities in Libya, but also by the Libyan people as well. Well, for the moment, Jackie, uh, thank you very much for bringing us up to speed, certainly on events in Benghazi throughout the day. These are still pictures that we're bringing you from Al Jazeera, from uh, our cameramen on the scene in the Bab al Azizia compound where Mama Gaddafi uh, used to live, work, and uh, broadcast his speeches to the country.